community divided. It's a dog fight. Environmental worries. We have a long history to the land. Ours to keep, ours to hold, and ours to cherish. Christy Clark couldn't have picked the worst place to put them. But the push is on. I'm going to keep fighting for LNG. Federal approval. Trudeau has fell in his face. And he's gone back to the old Harper regime. Hello, I'm Todd Lamoran. Tonight on APTN Investigates, our next story takes us to the heart of the Simshian Nation. Reporter Rob Smith visited three places there. Prince Rupert, the largest city on BC's north coast, Black Wallam's First Nation, and Lilu Island, the center point of a bitter dispute. Just weeks ago, the federal government approved a multi-billion dollar liquefied natural gas mega project there. Opposition has been fierce, led by one man, hereditary chief Donald Wesley, who says his main concern is environmental devastation. He promises, both in the courts and on the land at Lilu Island, a resistance. He's faced criticism and pressure from some of his own people who want the project to go ahead. But Chief Wesley plans to escalate the fight. There are days when this man feels under siege, criticized or betrayed by politicians and discredited by some of his own people. But today, he's being honoured. An artist has offered to carve a totem pole yeah, as a really, gift. You know, I'm honored that you're, you're, you're to be raised on disputed land. Chief Donnie Wesley has sworn to protect. The pole is intended to signify who owns the land. Stepping outside on his deck, the chief proudly shows off his world. Humpbacks in here all the time, eh? You're just some out here yesterday. Out here, and they're always breaching out to here, eh? very active here for killer whales and humpbacks. Donald Wesley was born in Lac Wallams, elevated to hereditary chief nearly a decade ago. He's now responsible for the land that includes Lilo Island. Lilo Island is due south, about 30 kilometers south from me. It's the proposed site of a multi-billion dollar liquefied natural gas facility. If built, it could destroy a sensitive and priceless ecosystem. We are really worried about what is transpiring out here. The LNG company Petronas approached the Lac Alams and offered up a $1.2 billion deal for the First Nations OK. The community overwhelmingly voted no and turned down the money. Despite this, last fall preliminary construction started. The chief and his supporters were determined not to let that happen. This is part of Lilo Island, Flora Banks, man. Of course we're not going to let them out here. Uh, we're fighting a big corporate company here. They, they got way more money than I got. I know that for a fact. I've never ever take my land and my water for granted eh, for what, it, what we have here. Mm -hmm. It's a second to none. Here's your boat. There was verbal altercations and accusations of a boat ramming another boat. Are uh, seen being investigated, the but there was no reports of injuries or arrests. Did you get permission from Smoigit Yahan to be in that territory? Consultation, you know, on the part of many of us have not taken place. They've only taken place with elected band councils. Um, the hereditary people and the tribal people, you know, they're told after the fact. We realized that we needed to track down the rights and title holders for this island and occupy it. Last year, Christy Brown sounded the alarm that started the occupation of Lilu Island. We needed to harvest food here and practice our culture as much as possible. The occupiers built permanent structures and Brown now lives on the island. Our traditional foods are the last link that I have to our cultures and it's a link of pride. My grandpa was a fisherman, my, I grew up on these foods and so that's why for many of us um, we've decided this is the last straw, they're not going to take this away too. Just off the shore is Flora Bank. It's where you'll find, when you break it all down, what this fight is really all about. This is eelgrass. No, it's not food. It's protection for these guys, salmon smolts. Flora Bank is a key rest stop for these young fish on the journey from spawning grounds to the open ocean. The fear is, lose the nursery, 
lose the salmon. And again, I'll tell the people that it's all based on science. But not everyone here is buying that. Some members question Wesley's right as a chief. This letter sent to the media last May was signed by the hereditary leaders of the nine allied tribes. And it states, Mr. Donald Wesley is not a hereditary chief and he should cease representing himself as one. Add to that a recent vote that suggests 65% of the community supports the LNG project and you have a community divided. From Prince Rupert, it's an hour by ferry to Lac Quilams. The First Nation is an amalgamation of nine historic tribes. Wesley's claim is he's <laughs> chief of one of those nine tribes. My tribal hereditary name is Smoigan Yahan. I am chief of the head chief of the Gitwag Yachts tribe. Lac Quilams also has a band council. The people elect a mayor, not a chief. The band council only has jurisdiction over the village. Uh, the traditional territories that we see all over here in Prince Rupert, that's a responsibility of the, the Samoyed that belongs to that specific tribe. But governments seek consultation with the elected council. So while in the village, I attempted to interview Mayor John Helene, but was told he was not in the community. Instead, Councillor Ted White informed me the council had no comment and said I was not supposed to be here without permission from the mayor. Hello, we are not available now. Please permission I didn't get. After the beep. Back in Prince Rupert, I did reach members of the hereditary leaders of the nine allied tribes, including what Elder Jack White. That is controversial? There's only a handful of people barking about the LNG and I don't know what they're barking about. Everybody wants, oh, one is tired of, um, you know, just getting by under the welfare system and they want to share the wealth now. They want the word wealth shared with them. When I was a young boy, I used to watch our grandmothers go around the island here to dig clams with their coal oil lights. When Wesley feasted to get his chief's name, he says at first he was reluctant. He didn't want to move up anything more than who I was, just because of the politics, eh? The chief's number one opponent in British Columbia's biggest LNG cheerleader is its premier. It's like we're sitting on a gold mine. She made headlines last year labeling the Lilu Island occupiers the forces of no. Clark promised natural gas development would help get the province out of debt and create a $100 billion prosperity fund and generate 100,000 jobs. But it's not as quick. It's not happening as quickly as I, as I thought and I'd hoped. With an election looming, the premier admits her promises won't be met. But I am not going to give up. I mean, we're talking about thousands and thousands of jobs for communities, some of whom might have 80% be, have unemployment right now. They're going to destroy something that you can never replace. Kenny Lawson is Chief Wesley's right-hand man. I'm what they call Liggett Gett in our language, and uh, that, that's a house leader, spokesperson. And uh, my chief is Yahan. He's, he's the chief. This is the heart of Tumsan territory. You know, on this bank here, we have uh, a lot of crab. We have halibut here, salmon. There's all kinds of stuff here that'll feed people throughout the winter. You get rid of this, what's there to be to fish out there? You, you kill this system, you're killing every, the whole thing. This is Lilo Island here. Out here, you get a sense of just how massive this facility will be. And the eel grass is right there on Flora Bank. The proposed LNG plant will completely cover the island, and overhead, a two-kilometer bridge will connect to the tanker dock. It's ludicrous, ludicrous that they've even thought of putting something like that there. In 1970, DFO said nothing could be built there. That's true, almost. It's actually a 1973 Environment Department study that concluded that construction of a plant superport would destroy critical salmon habitat. What has changed? For a while, the occupiers had hopes the new Prime Minister, with promises to reconcile with First Nations and fight climate change, would simply kill the project. Hey, Tez. 
Today, the federal government approved the Pacific Northwest LNG project. On September 30th, those hopes were dashed. After a three-year environmental assessment, the project was given the go-ahead. Because we do believe the environment and economy go together, and we need to be demonstrating that to Canadians. Come on, Tess. Trudeau has failed us. He has failed us miserably. Despite the problems, Rob Smith had tried to lock down an interview with the mayor when he was in Lac Wallums. He was able to get him on the phone. After the break, we'll hear what John Helene had to say. Turning down the deal should have been the end of the story. But then new leadership gained power and promptly held a new vote. The result? A majority of Lac Wallam's members are now in favour. The billion dollar deal is back on the table. But some members are crying foul. Here's part two of Lilu Island, a resistance. Chief Donald Wesley sees the threat to Lilu Island as a continuation of colonization. That's no different what's happening to us today. You know, what, what uh, foreign corporations coming into our land and um, the federal and provincial governments, you know, throwing this money out and saying, this is good for you. The Pacific Northwest LNG is touted as one of Canada's biggest investment projects worth over $11 billion. It promises 4,500 jobs during construction and the federal approval keeps Premier Clark's dream of a natural gas windfall alive. Um, it is impossible to move ahead with a major economic project that has 100% support. Christy Clark has a lot at stake in LNG development, despite the fact that some insiders are saying BC is 10 years too late getting into the LNG market. Petronas is a Malaysian company owned by the state. Amnesty International, in a recent report, warned that human rights violations in that country are on the rise. Rumors persist that Petronas is looking to dump its LNG investments in BC. In August, the company reported profits fell by 96% due to low oil prices. The company promised to cut $5 billion in assets. To ensure that this project proceeds, this is a really important question, and, and thank you, uh, thank you for being here. Uh, as part of the Opponent, Christine Smith-Martin, crashed the press conference. She wonders how this federal government can promise reconciliation when it appears to be having a hard time with common courtesy. At the same time the ministers were flying to Vancouver for this announcement, Chief Wesley was in Ottawa waiting to meet with them. It was just a sign of disrespect and I think it was a good indicator as to what that relationship looks like. On a promise to use the best available Fisheries Minister LeBlanc's office apologized and told APTN Investigates that the meeting was rescheduled. Last year when Lac Lams turned down a billion dollars, the message appeared to be clear. No LNG. But in the intervening year, a new ban council was voted in and a new vote was held. 65% voted yes to the question that was on the ballot. People believed it's an approval of the project, including the Premier. You know, for the Lac Lam, they voted two-thirds in favor of it. I think that's, you know, that's been a good change. They've had a change in leadership, I think, partly over the issue. It has Smith Martin shaking her head. There's still a lot of questions in our community about that vote, and um, the vote actually never said anything about Patronas. I think it's pretty misleading that, um, you know, it was explained to us that this is just a poll to kind of gauge where we're at. Here is the poll question. For them to come out and say they've gotten full authority, it's a yes vote, is, is really not accurate. Another member of the hereditary leadership who phoned me back is George Bryant. He says he organized the ballot and it's clear to him that the vote was yes for LNG. Uh, the 65.5%. Again, I, again, I go back to last year's rejection. Using what you just said, how did you come about to redo the vote if you're supposed to respect uh, the outcome? And the outcome last year was no. Well, it's getting the information out to the people. 
it, it's getting information out to to ban membership and uh, uh, the positive things that it could bring. There are 3,600 members of the Lackawalams. Bryant says there were over 800 ballots cast. He says that's close to the number of people that vote in banned elections. Smith Martin says members are confused as to where the mayor stands in all this. And I specifically asked our mayor, do you support you know, this going on Lilu Island? And he said no. On March 7th, 2016, Mayor John Aline wrote this letter restating his community's opposition. Eight days later, he sends this letter retracting the first letter after further discussions with the community. He writes the community is prepared to support and approval. Prior to my visit, multiple emails and phone calls went unanswered, except one time he did pick up. Is the billion dollar offer from Patronus still on the table? Oh, it, it, it's on the table and I think we, we've improved on it. Then you had another vote that went in favor, but I'm not sure if that was actually improving the Patronus um, no, uh, all, all that did was approve us to continue negotiating with uh, all the necessary oh, yeah. parties. What are you doing to uh, fix the schism within your community? I, I can't do much for people that would say no to everything. can't say much to people who pur purport to be hereditary leaders that aren't. I know who the real hereditary leaders are. As late as March of this year, the environmental assessment process was being called into question. Over 140 scientists signed this letter, complaining, among other things, science not funded by the proponent was being ignored. The first signature was Jonathan Moores, a professor at Simon Fraser University. Last year, the Lock alums rejected Patronus's offer largely due to the research done by Moore and this man, geologist Dr. Patrick McLaren. A former research scientist with the Geological Survey of Canada, McLaren warns if this project is completed, Flora Bank will be destroyed. And, it, and the prediction is that if they build this structure, the sand will be lost and the habitat will be lost. He found Flora Bank to be a unique place covered in ancient sediments left over from the Ice Age, kept in place by tides and other natural forces in perfect sink. Process to a sort of wall of energy surrounding the bank and says massive construction would breach this wall and the sediment simply would escape into the ocean taking with it the eelgrass. You lose the eelgrass, you lose the fish habitat. That's, I, I, think it, I think that would be as simple as that. He published his work in the Journal of Coastal Research but says it was not considered in the final environmental assessment. Instead, relying on the research put forward by the Patronus proponents. The proponent has been unable to produce an argument against the idea of losing Flora Bank. McLaren is skeptical of Patronus's research relying on numerical modeling. You can, you can produce a model to, to say whatever whoever's paying for it wants to hear. He finds it odd that the feds also seem to still have questions. All through the conditions is the requirement to do new numerical modeling before they start construction. They want to put they, they want to collect more wave data, they want to collect more current data, and they want to redo the numerical modeling that they've done already. So the conclusion uh, that, y when you think about that, the only conclusion to do that is that they don't really trust the present numerical model. The new modeling that they're proposing is not science. They have a preconceived con uh, uh, conclusion to make, which is that it's the same uh, as the old model. According to the lawyers here at the West Coast Environmental Law, as populations grow and resources dwindle, a new mindset for resource management must happen. Last spring, BC's Auditor General was critical of the province for putting the environment at risk by failing to properly measure cumulative effects. A BC First Nation has gone to court claiming this failure violates its treaty. I think increasingly there's been a recognition that the kind of project by project assessment of the impacts of different kinds of development isn't sufficient. Currently there is no formula you can plug data into that could give a value to how bad cumulative effects are in any given region. And it absolutely is really complex to do that and I think that's why you have a lot of scientists and environmentalists and 
indigenous communities operating for the for the use of the precautionary principle so saying that when we don't really know then we err on the side of caution but you know there's uh, they've divided communities they've divided uh, I have a huge family in Port Simpson there are some there that won't talk to me anymore and that's that's fine too you know they can they, they have their opinions that's their challenge is that they understand and they know that they do not have authority over those territories and so what you see is positioning to uh, either discredit our chief or discredit us. There's no um, question about the background of validity of um, who I am. And um, I would have never gone to Lilo Island if I didn't know where I came from. Since last year's confrontation on the water, the Prince Rupert Port Authority keeps a close eye on the occupiers. Uh, no, they're watching us. No, they, they never used to come into this harbour here. Very rare you'd see them out here. They, but uh, they're here to keep an eye on us, make sure we don't put any more structures on this island. And The Port Authority has legal jurisdiction over Lilo Island. During a phone conversation with APTN Investigates, spokesperson Michael Gurney said the occupiers are trespassing. They've been served two cease and desist orders demanding they stop building on the island. Gurney said this was a simple patrol, not harassment. So now it's up to Patronus to decide if they will build it, and the islanders are left to call out for allies. If we weren't here to protect uh, what we are protecting, there'd be nothing left in the next little bit. The ancestors fought hard for this land, and we have to carry on. I think anybody that wears a blanket and has a name should be out here protecting it, not helping destroy it. God gave us this land. We were here before the Bible was written. We were here before the pyramids. We were here before Troy. We'll be here long after Patronus. When we spoke to Chief Wesley at his home, he promised to keep on fighting. It's going to go into litigation. It'll, it'll probably go the way Enbridge is going, you know, that they'll... And we've told Ottawa we don't want to get into the courtroom because you're going to lose. You guys will lose this. This week, the chief made good on his promise, filing papers in a Vancouver courtroom asking a judge to review federal approval of the project. Next week, I'll have a story I'm calling Identity Crisis. As the Métis gain recognition and rights through court rulings, the question of who is Métis has become even more important. Groups in Atlantic Canada now say they are just as Métis as those in the West. I'm Todd Lamoran. Have a great night. <laughs>